Moby. Moby. Moby, you're supposed to be helping me move these things. Big Dan says you're lazier than a one-eyed rattlesnake with cactus fever. I, I don't, I don't know. I thought you'd know. Dear Tim and Moby, can you tell me about Bass Reeves? Was he really the greatest lawman of the Old West? Sincerely, Abby. Bass Reeves was a legendary lawman. He patrolled the American frontier in the late 19th and early 20th century. Over three decades, Reeves arrested more than 3,000 criminals. That's way more than other famous marshals like Wyatt Earp. Yeah, you can't believe everything you see in movies. According to those old westerns, everyone looked kind of the same. But real frontier towns had a diverse mix of people, including African Americans. They were cowboys, trappers, shopkeepers, you name it. Like Bass Reeves, many were people who went west to escape slavery. Reeves was born in Arkansas in 1838. He was enslaved to a man who joined the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Reeves went with him to the front lines. Details are sketchy, but he managed to escape, slipping over the border to Indian Territory. That was an area promised to native peoples who'd been forced off their land back east. Most of it is now Oklahoma. Well, the government had forced several tribes to move there in the 1830s. Yeah, the U.S. government. It wasn't one of our country's proudest chapters. At the time, national leaders were obsessed with Western expansion. They encouraged Americans to settle on native land. First in the south, and then farther and farther west. When the settlers moved in, it was only a matter of time before the Native Americans who lived there were forced out. For Reeves, going to Indian territory was like escaping to another country. It was governed by the tribes who lived there. That meant he was safe from the laws that would keep him in slavery. For years, Reeves lived among the Cherokee, Muscogee, and Seminole peoples. He picked up their languages, tracking skills, and knowledge of the landscape. He also developed into an incredible marksman. It didn't hurt that he was ambidextrous, equally skilled with both hands. Sometime after the Civil War, Reeves left the Indian Territory. Slavery had been outlawed, and he was now a free man. He bought some farmland in Arkansas, got married, and raised a family. Like thousands of other Americans, Reeves was taking advantage of the Homestead Act. It let citizens acquire public land cheaply, and sometimes for free. If you farmed it for five years, the land was yours to keep. This encouraged Americans to move west, including into Indian Territory. Right, the U.S. was still intent on expanding to the Pacific Ocean. Pioneers were starting towns and homesteads across the continent. Sheriffs and police officers helped keep the peace in these new settlements, but they were separated by vast stretches of land. These were beyond the reach of local police and made perfect hideouts for wanted men. So the federal government sent in its own law enforcement, the U.S. Marshals. Marshals were given authority over huge areas of land. Their job was to patrol these wild regions and capture outlaws. Reeves had a reputation as an expert tracker who knew Indian territory. The tribal police there were only allowed to arrest other Native Americans. So, non-Native criminals used it as a hideout. Reeves was one of the first deputies hired to round up these outlaws. And the first African-American marshal in the Old West. Since Reeves grew up enslaved, he had never been taught to read. Ordinarily, that would have been a major problem for someone who had to deal with dozens of written warrants. But Reeves had a fantastic memory. He had a friend read the warrants before he wrote out and memorized which was which. In all his years of service, he never served the wrong warrant. He would often ride back into town, leading a string of tied-up criminals. One time, Reeves even used his limitation to get out of a close call. Two outlaws had him at gunpoint, ready to fire. So he made a last request, asking them to read a letter from his wife. Before they knew it, the marshal had gained the upper hand. 
Reeves often relied more on his wits than his weapons. In 1878, he was in a tense standoff with master criminal Bob Dozier. It seemed like his luck had run out, as he was totally pinned down. <laughs> but Reeves was only playing possum. He duped Dozier, who didn't live to commit another crime. Yeah, the Old West was a violent place. With police spread so thin, people carried guns and other weapons to protect themselves. But having so many armed people in one place often created its own problems. As far as we know, Reeves only ever used his gun in self-defense. Of the thousands of criminals he captured, fewer than 15 were killed. His imposing size probably didn't hurt. He was six foot two, more than half a foot taller than the average guy back then. He also used disguises to catch fugitives by surprise. In one incident, he suspected that two brothers he was chasing would try to hide at their mother's house. So he disguised himself as a poor old man and knocked on her door. He told her that he was on the run from the law and asked if he could stay a while. When the brothers showed up, the four of them had a nice meal together. They even talked about teaming up to form a gang. But that night, Reeves handcuffed the outlaws while they slept. Pretty clever, huh? In more than 30 years of chasing armed criminals, Reeves was never shot. Well, by the early 20th century, the frontier had pushed all the way to the Pacific. The Old West era came to a close as the American population grew. In 1907, Oklahoma became a state and imposed Jim Crow laws. They made segregation a way of life. African Americans were kept apart from whites at school, in restaurants, everywhere. They were also barred from being U.S. Marshals. Bass Reeves spent the last few years of his life as a police officer in Muskogee, Oklahoma. He died in 1910. As the Old West faded into the past, its legends became the subject of movies, radio, and TV. Cowboys and gunslingers came to symbolize American grit and courage. Like other African Americans, Reeves' contributions were left out of these stories. Except... Well, some people believe that Reeves was the basis for the Lone Ranger. There are actually lots of similarities. They both relied on disguises and rode white horses. They worked with Native Americans to help track down bad guys. And they left similar calling cards. Silver dollars for Reeves, silver bullets for the Lone Ranger. We'll probably never know whether it's all just coincidence or not. But in recent years, there's been renewed interest in Reeves' real life. Someday soon, we might even see a Bass Reeves summer blockbuster. Wouldn't that be cool, Moby? Moby? <laughs> Who was that masked robot?